Hello and welcome to the first tutorial. We're gonna start off with um, chord sound design. How to actually write chords and what is usually nice for certain moods and stuff will come in the chords mixing video, which will be the next one I'll be doing. I'm gonna go through um, certain types of instruments and stuff. So uh, just to give like a basic idea of I don't know, producing or just some some tips I personally have or something like that. It might help you out at some point. Okay, to start off, I prepared a few different sounds um, with just a chord progression I wrote within a few minutes or something. Um, it was a few days ago. And first off, we have this one. It's just a little like atmospheric, uh, with a lot of reverb, um, like especially a long reverb, not too much mixed in, um, just a little bit of delay on it, and it's basically just an one LFO, just modulating um, a super saw with this um, oh yeah oh preset in in Zerum. Um, which sounds like vowel-like or voice-like, um, if it's generated from that, I don't know, but um, it sort of gives it, gives it that glassy sort of feel to it. And then just a little bit of um, bit crushing through the down sample distortion in, in Serum. Also, that's my Serum skin, if if you didn't know. <laughs> um, and then I added a phaser on that to to give it more of that glass feel and just a filter to cut off the high end. Pretty simple actually. Like without reverb and delay it would sound like that. Pretty dry so you, you sort of need the reverb also you should do a low cut. Because otherwise through the distortion you will have some, some low end mixed in there you don't want to have in there. I usually cut that around like 200 hertz or something. Then next thing is we have a little ARP. Um, I put that into chords as well. I could put it into like the plugs and leads tutorial I'll be doing. But I thought it would fit better in chords because it's basically playing the chords. So what I've done is just um, make a MIDI track and root it with that little ARP plugin into a Zerum track, which is then plays basically the same sound, but just with that pluck LFO. It's nothing much different, but can can sound really nice, actually, if you combine it in background with some other elements. That's some generic super saw right there. Um, just a little bit of chorus, multi band compression, and yeah a not that much detuned super saw and a more detuned with an octave up which sounds quite nice then we just have this LFO sort of opening up the filter and then just this volume automation which I don't know could be used for future bass or anything like that also with a shit ton of reverb on it. You can you can change that up if, if you like it different. Then I just made that sound. You can like experiment a lot around with it. You can even like modulate LFOs with LFOs. So I rooted LFO3 to that LFO. Also to a little bit of cutoff and, and resonance as well as some reverb into there. And also, I think I, yeah, I also changed the sound of the sine wave uh, throughout one bar. I could even switch it the other way around. And I could do some, some other funny stuff as well. Wait, let me just try something. I could also even try to detune them if I'd want to do that. Just... 
yeah, gives a li nice little detune on it, maybe then just a little bit of hyper and dimension on it. Yeah, you can basically do anything you want, so it's it's really not, I don't know, I could even like do something like this and then just, I don't know, modulate the cutoff a little bit and then just the level as well. That's the match, I guess. Yeah, you can do like crazy stuff with it. And that's basically most of my sounds are uh, just some some saw or something or a little bit of a little bit of um square sine wave stuff just automated with uh, a lot of lfo stuff mostly and like some effects on it on that one i put a little bit of vibrato to just give it a little bit more detune also cut off the lows again and a little less reverb smaller room and less mix even but without that, it would sound too dry, still. So that's why I did that. And then just some Isotope Zone 7 to actually um, spread it quite well in the stereo image. So to, like, yeah, mono the, the, the low end more and widen the high end. Though I think you can't actually hear that because it's rooting mono into my mic input that could be because I can't record Cubase for some odd reason because it blocks the audio driver uh, through o OBS so I'm rooting it back into my mic input through the mixer and that's mono so you just only hear the stuff I produce in mono I'm sorry for that I'll I'll try to figure out a way to uh, like around that or try to get it stereo but might not be possible actually yeah, then what I did is save some presets. I can show you these, which I made um, from just like some tracks I've done. I think it's like three chord presets. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, it's just like a super, uh, super saw. But with really not much detune. Very, very simple. That's loud. As I said, with like very simple um, wave tables, you can actually get some cool stuff out of out of there, like just some hyper dimension, um, some flanging, a little bit of compressing uh, for for loudness in, in that case, then just a little bit of reverb and yeah, the vibrato and stuff on it. Uh, then we have one from from Saving Up, a track that can, that never got released, uh, same as Decentral actually. <laughs> Oh, that's a little bit too low. Let me just... Some bit crushing on it, which I love to do on, on chords to make them sound more more electronic. Then again, some, some hyper for a little bit of stereo work, a flanger and a filter. So I, I love to work with very basic stuff, which then... Which then sounds cool and um, it all pretty much depends on the chord progression as well, so uh, we're gonna cover that in, in the next video, but um, if your chord progression is different then your chords will sound different. Um, that's more of a mixing issue and the sound can support that. Making good chords is like a good combination between sound design, mixing and the right chord progression with like inversions and which tones to actually play. If I like take off these, it makes a difference if, if the bass note is in there or not. Of course it is. Or if I invert it, so like that note is always up. Or I could just like let the bass note play just the second note of each chord. Gives a different feel to it, uh, doesn't really sound good in that case, but um, it just does, so um, 
if you want to do that, you can do that. I'm just gonna try out using that note. Yeah, it can be interesting as well, and then maybe just... Yeah, I can like try it, try it around and, and try to get some stuff to work. Alright, so that was it for the sound design for chords. It's not too complex for me at least, or as I do it, and I love to keep it simple at that point. And for me it's more about the chord progressions and the mixing behind it with, with other elements. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video, uh, it's not too long and the next one is gonna come very soon, hopefully. And yeah, see you then. Bye.